Today we're going to write to analyze character development in dramatic literature, specifically in Shakespeare's tragedy of Macbeth. We're going to look at the dramatic device of soliloquy to see how it helps us to see the innermost workings of a character. The standards that we will address today are Mississippi Reading for Literature 10.3 to do with complex characters. You will cite evidence in a text that shows the complexity of a character. You will identify the motivation of characters within a text and determine when those motivations are conflicting. You will also, on the writing side of things, address Mississippi Writing 10.9, Writing to Analyze Characters. You will draw evidence from a literary text to support analysis, reflection, and research, and also write to analyze the use of a dramatic device in character development, that dramatic device being soliloquy. All right, let's jump in and look at the prompt. We are going to write a paragraph explaining how Shakespeare uses soliloquy as a device to develop Macbeth as a complex character by revealing his conflicting motivations. We cannot go any further until we break this prompt down and understand what it wants us to do. So, let's look at some words. Soliloquy. We need to know this vocabulary. We need to know that a soliloquy is a dramatic device in which the character is on stage alone and reveals innermost thoughts to the audience. We need to know what a device is. A device is no more than a tool, just a tool that a playwright uses to help the audience get more into the character and to believe them. Develop. What does develop mean in literature? It means characterization strategies that help create a believable character. Then what is a complex character? We have to know what that is before we can address this prompt. A complex character is also known as a round character. These characters have many traits and motivations, both good and bad. And then motivations. If we don't know what that is, we can't go any further. So motivations are what drives the character, the reasons for their actions. So after breaking this prompt down, we just need to see how does Shakespeare use this speech to help the audience see that Macbeth has some inner conflict going on, that he has some turmoil. So let's look at the soliloquy that we have previously annotated. We're going to look a little more closely at this and just review our annotations. Um, we marked this line, if the assassination could trample up the consequence, if only there were no consequences, if only there were no consequences, then he would have no problem murdering the king. But then he says, but in these cases, we still have judgment here. There will be consequences. It won't be the be-all and the end-all here. There will be judgment. This shows us that Macbeth is cautious and that he's thinking of self-preservation. It also shows us that Macbeth is selfish. Now, before this um, soliloquy, he had decided that he would murder the king um, with the help of his wife. But let's see how he, dis how he feels at the end of this. He's here in double trust. First, I'm his kinsman and his subject, then as his host. Duncan trusts Macbeth for two reasons. This begins to show us that Macbeth is feeling some guilt. This Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, he hath been so clear in his great office that his virtues will plead like angels. Duncan has been a good king, a kind king, also showing us, showing the audience, that he's feeling some guilt. Then at the very end of his speech, he says, I have no spur to prick the sides of my intent, but only vaulting ambition. And um, it's cut off here a little bit, but also ambition can lead to a downfall. My only reason to kill him is my ambition. So in the end, Macbeth decides, no, he's not going to do it. But clearly, based on this soliloquy, we can see that he had some inner conflict, that he's having some conflicting motivation. All right, let's jump back into our presentation. We now have to begin to write. And when we write a paragraph, any paragraph, we need two pieces of evidence. We will need a topic sentence that we will go back and compose at a later time. The first piece of evidence that I chose is something that will show that he is willing to kill the king at first if there were no consequence. So I need a transition at first, comma. 
I need to lead in, and in a lead in, we have to have plenty of context. We need to know who is speaking. We need to know something, you know, about what's going on. And we say that Macbeth says he would murder the king, quote, if the assassination could trample up the consequence. And we need to cite that quote. Scene one, I mean, act one, scene seven, lines four through five. We then explain our quote. And when we explain, we want to have good idea development. We do not want to say this quote shows. We want to restate the quote, his willingness to kill the king if there were no consequences. This is restated in another way. Then we need a good verb. The quote, not this quote shows, but the restatement of the quote depicts. Then what is it that it shows? It shows his ability to be ruthless and his selfishness. So these are our three parts of explanation. And this is very important in idea development. Our second piece of evidence. For my second piece of evidence, I chose to show something that conflicted with the first, conflicted with the first. So I'm going to use however for a transition. I'm going to lead in. Later in his soliloquy, Macbeth states, so we have some context. And what does he state? Duncan is here in double trust. First as he is his kinsman and his subject, then as his host. This is in Act 1, Scene 7, Lines 15 through 18. Again, three-part explanation. Macbeth's reflection on the king's trust in him. This quote, not shows, but reveals to the audience. And what does it reveal to the audience? That he feels a sense of guilt and shame about his murderous thoughts. So there we have our second piece of evidence, and we interweave that in using a transition, a lead-in, the quote, and then we thoroughly explain so that we have idea development. All right, back to the prompt. We are going to use this prompt to help us write a topic sentence. We can get rid of write a paragraph explaining how, but then looking at the rest of the prompt, let's see if it will help us write a topic sentence. We can always use the prompt to help us write our thesis statement or our topic sentence for our paragraph. Shakespeare uses soliloquy as a device to develop Macbeth as a complex character by revealing his conflicting emotions. I would probably change this wording to inner conflict or inner turmoil. Let's see. Topic sentence. Shakespeare uses soliloquy as a device to develop Macbeth as a complex character who experiences inner conflict. All right. We have a topic sentence. We have two pieces of evidence. The only thing that we have left is a closing sentence. So let's put everything together and let's go through and annotate to make sure that we have all of our parts if we were to have to reverse outline. Shakespeare uses soliloquy as a device to develop Macbeth as a complex character who experiences inner conflict. That is our topic sentence. Here is our transition. At first, lead in. Macbeth says he would murder the king. And then our quote, if the assassination could trammel up the consequence. And always in MLA style, we have our citation with our period afterwards. His willingness to kill the king if there were no consequences depicts his ability to be ruthless and his selfishness. This is our explanation. However, transition, later in his soliloquy, context, that's our lead in, Macbeth states that, and here's our quote. Duncan is here in double trust, first as he is his kinsman and his subject, then as his host, and MLA citation. Another explanation. Macbeth's reflection on the king's trust in him reveals to the audience that he feels a sense of guilt and shame about his murderous thoughts. Clearly, transition into our closing sentence, Shakespeare illustrates another good verb, Macbeth's inner turmoil by revealing his innermost thoughts through the use of soliloquy, always tying back to our topic sentence. And there is our writing. We wrote a paragraph about character development through the use of soliloquy.